OK, so this is, this is something. So I'm going to show you a calculation that goes wrong, principally because of this, um, this fact that uh, Poisson degree distributions give rise to P of k equals R of k, right? That's a weird feature of them. So we've, we've had this notation. S1 is going to be the fractional size of the largest component. I guess I should say fractional size. Um, and uh, so we're going to have our eddish Rennie network, infinite one. So let's just do, let's do something sneaky, because we've got envelopes floating around. No, we don't. But um, yeah, we don't anymore. I guess your iPad, right? Napkins. People still use napkins, right? Maybe. Was that gone, too? You millennials? You just text your napkins to yourself. <laughs> it's like with the doorbells. Even saying doorbell is threatening. Um, OK, so, so let's say, uh, let's sort of make this little gamey thing. We're going to say that probably the randomly chosen node does not belong to the largest component. OK, and then maybe we can make a little iterative thing. This will be the essence of a whole set of calculations that one can do, and we'll do a few of them. But the idea will be there, right? So if we, if we figure this out, then this will have to be 1 minus the fractional size of the largest component. Right? So this is a probability. You can think of it as probability and size matching up. It's the um, probability that you're not in the thing. So here's our little trick. So if, if a node is not part of the largest component, then none of its neighbors can be. Right? That would be, so we can, and then because we've got randomness, we can think, well, maybe we can make a little recursive calculation. We don't have to like go out to two neighbors and three neighbors. You know, it's just one set will work. So this would have to be true, right? So the probably that a node is not connected, well, it can have any, it can have degrees, you know, going from zero to infinity, so we allow all that. And if it's got degree seven, then we'd have to have all of its seven friends are not in the thing as well. So that happens with this probability, delta to the seven. And then we sum over all of them. Sort of seems okay. I mean, right, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a bad argument. Um, so you can easily be led in this way, and uh, people have sort of put this in papers and books. Um, you know, maybe they knew what they were doing, but it's the thing is, this is not the, this can't be the same delta, right? This is this is the probability that we choose a node, and this is the probability that we choose a node by its edge. So this is your friends are strange. So this is not acknowledging that your friends are strange, but it all feels good while you're doing it. No one wants to believe the. You know, you know, and it's solvable. This is pretty cool. Um, also, very disappointingly, it works. So um, we're going to put in a plus one degree distribution. All right, we're going to stick it in. This is this is the good old thing. And again, every network pretty much that we pull out of here will will have this. So that feels good. Uh, we've got a k factorial delta the k. Here's our actual powers of k. Right? These are constants. I know this notation could be confusing, but th these are constants. This blob. Can come out, so let's do that. So the e to the minus the mean comes out, and then we're going to uh, uh, schnook these things up next to each other. Uh, average degree and delta, they're both the power of k, so we'll make them friends. And we've got a k factorial on the bottom. So this is blob to the k over k factorial. It's just a beautiful thing, right? It's uh, exponential. So we've got e to the blob, and it's e to this blob, which is the average degree delta. So this is all pretty enjoyable. Uh, we can factor out that average degree. So we've got e, to, and we'll do it like this, e to the minus average degree. And, and putting the minus sign out here is, you know, this is a hygienic thing to do, right? Because 1 minus delta is manifestly, that's positive. This is a probability. So there's always this is a positive blob. This is a positive blob. So, you know, we're sort of obliged to put a negative there. Um, I can't tell you how important that is. People really don't do this much, but you just really, 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 really should do this in a nice way. Yeah, right? Whenever you have things you know what sign they are, make, them make it clear. OK, so then we have, uh, we have this point right, that the, probably the node is not in the giant component. It's really 1 minus the fractional size. So we could stick all of that in. Uh, that 1 minus delta there is actually just the fractional size, so that's this piece. And then on the left-hand side, we have delta. So it's 1 minus the fractional size. 
so I put it in there, right? So I put in one minus the fractional size here, and then um, you have to multiply it through by a negative if you want, and then swap the, the one over to the other side, and you get this. So that's pretty good. So now we've got a thing where we can, we can tune this average degree, and we'll get the, the, the size of the giant component, you know, which is a, this is an achievement beyond what we had before, right? This is the actual size of it, not just whether it exists or not. Now, whether it exists or not is not kind of obvious in that, though, right? You have to sort of play around with this a little bit. It exists if, if this is greater than zero, right? So we'd have to kind of solve this thing. A little tricky to solve this character, but actually there's only one average degree in here, so we can unravel this thing and get average degree as a function of size, right? So uh, we're trying to get to this... Yeah, we're trying to get to this blob, where we're trying to get this thing, right? Average degree is this way, and this is S1. But we can plot uh, k equals some function of, we've actually got this. So this is doable. Fair? All right, so you know, you could actually put it into a thing and plot it, you're right, right. You open up math, I'm kidding, you don't use Mathematica, right? No one uses that. <laughs> well, from, um, use Python, I guess you do, right? And then you, you, so you can make it, and it'll be fine. All right, okay, good. Uh, so there's some limits, you could do some things like this. So this is, this is the rewriting piece, right? So undo the whole thing. It's an interesting little blob to look at. So it looks a bit nasty, right? So when uh, S1 goes to zero, this goes pop, and this also is log of zero, so, you know, be a little careful with that. Um, <coughs> this is going to be good, right? So it's average, uh, first of all, we can sort of look at two of these, right? So the average degree goes to zero, so every, no one's connected to anyone else. Then uh, this goes to one minus one, right? One minus e to the zero, doesn't matter what this is. This is always something between zero and one, so this is going to be one minus one, so it's zero, so it's looking at this. So that's good, that makes sense. Uh, as it goes to infinity, again, this, this is good news, right? This will go to zero and we'll get to one, so that's good. Uh, you can see, depending on how you want to play around with this, right, you could do some derivatives and things, but basically there's a critical point when um, average degree is one. And uh, Right, so it's only solvable. So this is where you get to the point. So it's only you only get this solution, a, a positive solution, when the average degree is greater than one. You know, it just takes a little bit of playing around with. But you can think of it as some sort of transcritical bifurcation. That uh, that there are a couple of solutions, and the way to think of them. This is always very very pleasant, right? There's actually kind of another one here, and another one here. And it's transcritical because these two things swap. I mean, maybe I'm overstating things there a little bit, but that's often how these, these phase transitions come out mathematically, right? So there's actually, this really is a curve that keeps going. It doesn't go boink like that. Uh, it's just that these things cross. Coolio? I know. It's really nice. Okay. Yeah, maybe. All right, good. So, right, so we've got everything. I, I said dash, 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 dash. Good. So, and so that little calculation, this sneaky little thing, right, where we say, mm, delta equals, you know, it totally works. You know, you can run your simulations and this matches up perfectly. So you leave, right? You just close the book. Uh, but it's totally wrong. So, uh, and, and the reason is that those two deltas are the same only for Poisson degree distributed networks. Right? So, I mean, I've said it out loud, this is exactly the thing. So, um, we know our friends are different. So, it works because the average degree of a node randomly selected is the same as the average number of other friends of a node that's randomly selected by running along an edge. So, so we need another one. We need a delta prime, actually. Right, we need something else. So we need to do something like, and, and really, so this will be the, the smart thing to do. We need some, and I'll just 
bash some things here. So we'd need to have delta, yeah, delta equals uh, the sum from k equals zero to infinity. It would have to be pk, and then it would be, um, did I say, yeah, just delta prime to the k. Right, so delta prime is a probability that if you run along an edge, you, you reach a node that's not part of the network, other giant component. Really, you find a recursive story is for uh, the delta primes, right? So if you hit a node, what's the chance? And that's, what, that's the kind of mathematical thing we'll get to, right? So you don't start at a node, you just run along an edge and think about what the other edges are like coming out of the node you hit. You can, get a you can get a consistent recursive story for that because you know, the, the edge story stays the same, right? The probability that this edge leads is, is you, know, you know, this friend has a certain other number of other um, friends, that's the same as the edges coming out, right? We don't, there's no, ah, the words. Um, you know, if you randomly select a node, and you randomly select a node by, by following an edge. These are different things. But here we're going to randomly select a node by following along an edge, and then we're going to do it again. And so we, we're doing the same thing. Right? We're really doing the same thing. So that's why that works. So what you do is you solve this problem for delta prime and then just sort of stick it back in here. So that's the idea. And this could go on forever. And, and I'll try not to make it go on forever. But it's really a good, you really, it's really a fundamental thing. OK. OK. So generating functionology, which some of you will have played with. Yes, a little bit. If you're a combinatorics fan, you will have seen it. But uh, you don't have to worry about it too much. There really is literally, I mean, I'm not just making this up. I'm very pleased this exists. But this is um, Wilf's book is truly called Generating Functionology and um, is, is a charming Charming thing to, to look through. Okay. Okay. All right. Too much pain? Not enough? 